What up, everybody? It's Robot Man, and today I'm going to show you how I was made. Check it out. Just kidding, it's me, AP. Let me get this thing off. Woo! <coughs> All right. I love the series Doom Patrol on HBO Max. It has great cast, fun acid trippy storylines, and it's really just a great watch. And one of my favorite characters is Cliff Steele, AKA Robot Man, if you couldn't tell, played by American treasure, Brendan Fraser. He's an F-bomb dropping, no nonsense, no care in the world robot with a heart of gold. I mean, what's not to love? So, in preparation for New York City Comic Con this year, I decided to add Robot Man to my cosplay collection. Now, before I show you how I put him together, make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons. It's okay, I'll wait. All right, done? All right, let's break it down piece by piece. First, the bucket, or the helmet. I got these files from 3D Mon. 3D Mon. I'm not going to do a 3D printing montage or instructions on how to finish 3D prints. I've covered this extensively in the past. You can check out those videos below or up there, up there somewhere. These files were great and designed for large and small printers. And what was awesome about the small printer files is that they were thoughtfully designed, meaning that they were designed in a way that they could easily be put together in pieces versus slicing it yourself and trying to line everything up appropriately. This came with actual pegs that you could print out that would line everything up for you. And in terms of the pieces, so I'm printing on a Prusa Mark 2.5S, I was able to print this is one piece, the jaw is one piece, the top came in two pieces, and then the back was one piece. These pieces right here, the ear holes, the ear pieces, were uh, printed on my resin printer. And they all just fit together very nicely. The only issue that I had was that at 100% scale, the fit was really tight, like brain crampingly tight. So I upped it to 125% scale, which actually may have been too big. If you watch the show, you know that Robot Man's head isn't that big. It's actually relatively close to human head size, unless you're a walking bobblehead or Funko Pop. Now, if I go back to reprint this, I will experiment a bit more, but thinking that 110% scale is probably more accurate and won't make me look so goofy. These files also came with a neck, which is nice, not very screen accurate, but the whole point of cosplay is not about screen accuracy, it's about having fun dressing up, right? The helmet, like everything else, was primed with regular automotive primer, and then it coated again with Vallejo Black Surface Primer, and then I top coated with a bright bronze. I'm very happy with the coloring of the armor and the helmet. Now, since the bucket was a bit big for my noggin now, I added in some foam padding to make it snug and comfortable. All right, now I'm gonna hand this off to my co-host today. Hey, past AP, what's the most important part of this helmet? The eyes, which are the window to the soul of Robot Man. Uh, so I reached out to the RPF for some guidance here, and uh, I made a new friend who helped me solve this problem and hooked me up with some etched acrylic with circles on them. And pretty much what we're going to do is we're going to shine a light through here, and it's going to illuminate the circle, making it look like a light. I wonder if I can... It's kind of dirty, but you can see how it's without the light, with the light. So pretty much the light shines through the side and reflects off of the etching, which is super cool, as well as all the dust. But, so I'm going to, of course, use red because that's what color his eyes are. All right, we're going to use, I have three millimeter... I have three millimeter. Okay, I guess we'll use the three millimeter. That should be bright enough. And I like these LEDs because they're pre-wired and they have the resistor already uh, wired on here so you don't have to deal with that. And pretty much I'm just going to solder these together, these together. Can you 
you see that? Yes. Nice. Yes. To attach the eyes to the LEDs, I just used some electrical tape to hold them in place. That's right. Then I installed the eyes in the mask with some hot glue on a low heat setting to avoid melting the acrylic. <laughs> so that is the mask. And it's powered by a rechargeable lithium ion battery pack that I just keep in my jacket pocket. The armor components also came from 3D Mon as a separate file package. And I actually didn't have to do any scaling for these. At 100%, they seem to work just fine. To help keep them in place, I actually glued in strips of foam to kind of sit tight around my forearm which did work really nicely, but it gets really hot in here. Uh, so just be prepared to be grossed out when you pull these off and a pool of sweat comes with it. The only thing I didn't like about the 3D files is that the fingers weren't really labeled that well and there weren't a lot of good instructions on, on which fingers went to what. So I had to kind of figure it out on my own and I think I got them in the right position. They're simply attached by adding uh, the ring piece on loose and then I hot glued the fingertips on top to hold everything in place. It does make it a little challenging to pull off and on if you need to. These also did come with a, a midsection. So there was the tip, midsection and knuckle area. I guess my fingers are really short and so I didn't need all three pieces. Leave your comments to yourself. These also came with a back plate that I did have attached with Velcro, but that came off during the con. I will say though, it, I may just leave these off. Wearing them was cool, um, but again, having to take these off and on for various things by myself, um, these just made it a little bit more complicated. So I'll probably just leave these off in the future. I think these look good all right though. These look good all right. I think these look all right though, without them. To do the gloves, I just picked up some cheap gloves off of Amazon and I painted them with bronze leather paint. And what's great about leather paint is that it dries flexibly, flexible. So it doesn't, it doesn't crack or anything like that. And I'll leave links to all of the supplies I used below so you can purchase these for your own Robot Man cosplay. For the knee pads, I simply epoxied on some straps that I had laying around the workshop. I also added in some foam here to make these a little bit more comfortable to wear for a long period of time. The epaulettes were painted with Vallejo black and then top coated with a, an aluminum rub and buff. And then to attach them to the jacket, I just glued on or epoxied on some webbing that could then use the jacket's little clip thing here to slide this on like so. And then there's a button here, presto. Now I have my epaulettes. If I were gonna do this again, I would find a way to make these more like shoulder pads so they hold up because, you know, you have to be a little bit Frankenstein-y uh, as Robot Man and I have sloped shoulders. His are up like this. I mean, you could probably get some foam and stuff it in there to, to lift these up a little bit or even, heck, wear a, wear a coat hanger. That would be very uncomfortable though. The boots are another unique piece to the costume with some sweet metal looking toe caps. Hey, past AP. I heard you having some problems up there with the toe caps. What's going on? The problem is, is these were not designed for my unique footwear. And as you can see, they kind of hang over. They don't look terrible, but I want them to be a little bit more molded. So these were printed in resin. What's great about resin is that if you heat it up, they become malleable. 
resin becomes malleable, malleable. And so I'm gonna put this in some hot water, get it nice and toasty, and then I can shape it to my boot. So let's go uh, microwave some water. I microwaved the water for about five minutes to make it nice and hot. I then placed the resin toe cap in the water and let it sit for about one minute. The heat made them nice and squishy. I placed the cap over the boot and held it in place for a little bit, but then I ended up using clamps and let them sit for a couple of hours. Once they cooled down, they were good to go. I finished them off with some rub and buff. To attach to the boots, I just used some black hot glue. Knock on wood, they've stayed on through one con and a Halloween parade. Good stuff, AP. Good stuff. For the soft goods, I picked up a cheap leather jacket and motorcycle boots on Amazon. I tried finding used, but holy cow, buying used is almost more expensive than buying new these days. I mean, what is going on in the world? Seriously, what? that a used jacket costs more than a new jacket. I even went to some local thrift stores where I did score a sweet t-shirt for $2.99, but everything else in the store, like jeans and jackets, were ridiculously priced. Again, what's going on? Why are used clothes so expensive? Robot Man has some great tees. In the series, I even think he was introduced with a Hello World shirt that he literally made himself by drawing on a blank t-shirt with a permanent marker because he was bored. I mean, why not? That's what you do when you're bored, right? You make t-shirts. Everybody's making t-shirts these days. Buy my t-shirts. Now, when I was doing my research, I found an image from one of the comics where he's wearing a Gabba Gabba Hay shirt from Pinhead by the Ramones. And since the spirit of cosplay is, we accept you, or at least it should be, I thought this was an appropriate tag for my Comic-Con getup. All right, now that I've taken it all off, let me show you how I put it on. You're going to want some black leggings and a long sleeve shirt. I didn't have this shirt. I'm waiting for one of my OnlyFans subscribers to buy it from my Amazon wish list for me. First thing, make sure you have your t-shirt on. Next, buckle on the knee pads and tighten them. Just like you do in the morning, put on your pants. Mine are very baggy, so putting these on over the knee pads is relatively a breeze. I highly suggest getting a size up just for this. Trying to put on the knee pads after is a bit challenging. Then the boots. Check out those awesome toe caps. Whether or not you use the neck piece, you're going to want a balaclava. You could paint this bronze like the gloves too for some added detail. Then the jacket. And now the arms. You could probably wait to put this on after you put on the mask. I prefer doing it before. Fire up your battery pack and put on the mask. Oh, and for the love of everything holy, make sure you do a better job at hiding your power cable. Finally, the gloves. These are a pain since the tips are glued on. Just go slow and once you get them on, or mostly on, you can slide the knuckles into place and that will secure them. And 
now I'm ready to groove. Ah, a relatively easy costume to get into. You don't need assistance to do it. Uh, you just have to be careful because there are some sharp edges. I've already uh, busted a piece of my, my arm here. Uh, that's okay, I can fix that up relatively easily. I couldn't be happier with how this turned out. The 3D printing files from 3D Mon were fantastic. I'll leave links to those below. If you're gonna pursue your own Robot Man cosplay, I definitely suggest that you check out those files. They weren't that expensive and they were great to work with. If this video inspired you to do your own Robot Man costume, then give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment below, tell me what you're up to, and share this video with your friends. And finally, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. I don't get it. I don't understand. What's happening?